Mr. Speaker, the, Mr. Ramjitan performed for the gallery. And the proceedings are being streamed live, and I hope, I pray to God, that the guy in his populace look at him, not tonight, not this morning, but we'll keep it on the website and they will look at him. And they will hear him speak about how important the stakeholders are, how important consultations are. They will hear him speak. And they will be reminded because he's speaking on an AML CFT bill. You hear? They will remember him, Sifataf. Sifataf, he used to call it in 2012 and 2013. When he voted down four sets of AML CFT bills. Private sector met with him. CARICOM met with him. The Georgetown Chamber of Commerce met with him. The sugar workers come out in front of the parliament and pick it in. <laughs> See Fataf people came. You remember? See Fataf. And you told them the very thing. This is a sovereign parliament. And the sovereign parliament will vote it down. Well, the sovereign parliament will pass it tonight. The sovereign parliament will pass it tonight. Because the sovereign parliament this time will be acting in the best interest of Guyana and the very stakeholders that you pretending, you pretending to represent. You think that the businessmen and the ordinary people of this country will forget what they had to go through with the sanctions? You think what sanctions? You are so oblivious. 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 When we lost corresponding banking relations, you don't know. You don't live in this world. You don't know the penalties that the money transfer agencies were subject. You don't know how our international ability to do trans transborder transactions were affected. You don't know. Because you live a different life. No, you, you don't interact. You don't interact with people when you condemn this country to a status of blacklisting. That is what you did. At one o'clock, quarter to two, you coming now to be a champion of AML CFT? You are the last person. You are the last person who should speak here. Newfound concern. And he does it with a plum, an alarm. He's disgusting with us. But I am going to play the speech for the people to hear, this private sector to hear. Oh, you are now their new guardian. You condemn them. To, they lost millions and millions of dollars annually. We have not recovered. You don't know. You don't know that we have not recovered yet from those sanctions. We have not recovered yet from those sanctions. These are part of the measures that will put us back there. So long it has taken us, simply because of what you have done in the select committees. We met Sundays, we met Saturdays, you think I will ever forget the scars that we went through with your one seat majority and what you put this nation through. And today you coming here like a transformed, born again, revolutionary, a moralist, and you lecturing to us about democracy? You, democracy? For five months, you got the television. And you said that you saw the fraud being perpetrated, and you went and you defend it. You went and you defend it. You packed up your things at your office. You bid farewell. You said we lost. You got one, two friends in the PPP who got to look after you. I, I know you were referring to me. But I don't consider that friendship anymore after I hear your presentation. That is the speech you gave. You got the man show on Trinidad, the radio show. And the man asked you pointedly. And you had to make up a story. You still got a little shame in you. You make up a story. Oh, I was packing up to go to the Prime Minister house. <laughs> <laughs> that was the explanation. He packed it up because he was going to be the next Prime Minister. You just listen to yourself. 
You just listen to yourself. Oh my God. You, uh, you, you call, you stand on the podium and you use the word shameless. You use the word shameless. Mr. Speaker, the standing, first of all, let us, let us begin, Mr. Speaker, by recognizing that the AML CFT set of laws are what can be described as sui generis. They are a different, peculiar, and unique framework of statutory regulation because they are directed to regulate a unique, peculiar type of activity of criminal conduct. Money laundering, international financing of terrorism, organized crime, f f um, arms smuggling, cocaine. We in Guyana are simply part of an international regime. These laws were not originated in Guyana or the Caribbean. This is the international best practice, acceptable standards that the world is governed by if you want to be part of the civilized league of nations. Now, this, uh, this regime of laws and the type of offenses here are in our laws since the substantive act was passed. Not now, it's in our laws nearly 15 years now. That's the first point I want to make. The problem with honorable members in this house is that they don't read anything. So you don't know. So when you pick up the bill tonight and you read, it would alarm me if I read it for the first time and I have no understanding of the Guyana law and the AMLCFT infrastructure and framework. It would alarm you. It is alarming, but that is the nature of the law. And it has been with us since 2009. But you don't know. So you read it there just now, half an hour ago, and you see these provisions, and you see these fines, and you see the power to enter and search premises, and to take documents, and oh my God, democracy coming to an end. That's the level of the ignorance. This is in the law since 2009. All we are doing is that we are extending it now to another commission, and I will explain to you why. I will explain to you why. All the supervisory authorities in the country, and you know how many they have? You don't even know. You don't even know when they perform these functions, and Diana has not collapsed. And they're doing this since 2009. You were in government and they were doing it, and you don't know. With ministerial portfolio for security, enforcement of the law, you do not know. You did not know. I am telling you that. That's the level of your ignorance. What was Felix doing? These things are, there is no new power, no new power that is created in this bill. No new power. It is a transferral of powers that already reside in supervisory authorities right across the framework. The commercial banks have this power. The central bank has this power over the commercial banks. The insurance regulator has this power over insurance companies. You agree? Because, and that brings me to the point, let me, let me drill it into your head. The reason why, as I said to you, and I said to the house, it is not possible to create one of this body over every single area of activity. So you have to, because you're talking about work for the boys in one commission, we will have to replicate this commission 20 times. It's 20 more times jobs for the boys. You don't even understand that. 
What we are doing is consolidating the functions into one singular com commission that will regulate a whole set of agencies and sectors that require regulation. You can't understand that? So why are you bringing authority for real estate agents? The real estate, the real estate authority will regulate the real estate. Oh my. That will not come under this commission. This commission is to deal with those agencies that don't have regulatory bodies. The real estates are each one of them would be a reporting entity and the authority will be the supervisory authority. I don't have to. Give up, give up. Oh my. Give up, give up. The problem is that you don't read. None of you read, and you come here and you make out a case for the bill to go to a select committee. Do you know what happens in a select committee? I have presided in a select committee and I participated. It is the government, it is the government side reading for you, clause by clause of the bill, explaining for you to understand. And when you understand, we, we have to move on. Well, this is not nursery school. We don't have to teach you. You know, the whole argument about the select committee is a disguise. It's a disguise because they don't want to read, or perhaps they can't. Read the bill, internalize it, and come here and formulate a proper debate. The one, the Honorable Member Amanda Desir, she's a lawyer does not read any of the bills that she speaks on. None. What she comes here and do is to create a case to go to select committee. That is all that she does. A lot of fun and fear. A lot of, you know, pageantry. Hair flicking on this side. Right, all, all kinds of antics. Nothing of substance. They don't read. They come here, deliver a speech about democracy, about failing to take a bill to a select committee as an excuse and a disguise and an alibi. That is what you do. And the people of Guyana must know that because you are being paid to do the people's work. You read the bill, you read the bill, Honorable Member Ramjatan, this afternoon. The Bar Association did not even consider you important to send their correspondence to you. And you are blaming me for that. That is the respect they have for you. That is not my fault. If the Bar Association decide not to deal with you, I have consulted with them. I have consulted with them. So I am saying, Honorable Member Ferguson, read the bill by yourself. Hire somebody to help you read it if you can't. Hire somebody to, write Hire somebody to explain to you if you can't understand it yourself. But don't come here and fabricate and concoct a case that you don't have enough time and the bill must go to a select committee. And when it goes to a select committee, all you do is to sit down and wait when the minister reads section by section and explain to you what the section says and then they then, then you will determine whether you support the section or not. What is this? You think this is play school? What do you play them? A place of early, what do you call it? Early childhood center. You think this is an early childhood education center? <laughs> you think this is an early childhood education center? You have to come here and read. Come here and read, and when you read, come forward with sensible criticisms, and I will answer them. I did that to the public heard me. Which, yes, I, I, I'm happy that the public heard you, and that's why I am explaining that I know, and the public will know. The public will know that not a new power, not a new power is created in this commission. Not a new power. The, the public knows that. The public living. What, what you don't understand, what you don't understand is that the public living with all these powers being exercised 
by different supervisory authorities. All we are doing is bringing another sector of our economy and, and, and players in the economic sector under regulation. That's all we are doing. We are expanding the regulatory framework. It's not a new framework. It's a new commission getting all powers and exercising its, its role, its supervisory role over the rest of the people that they have to now regulate. You don't want it to be a new What? Honorable AG, you can talk to me. Yes, sir. I am, I'm being distracted. I'm trying to help the honorable member. I'm trying to help him. But this is not the select committee we described. Yeah, you know. I know. So this I is know. the full house. And this is not also an early center, an early childhood education center. But still, I'm trying. It may be an early geriatric center, apparently. So, <laughs> and I'm not including you. I, I borrow the, 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 the formulation of exemption that um, my, my friends so articulately coined earlier tonight. So, Mr. Speaker, all the loud objections that we are hearing, it, it storm in a teacup. There, every, and, and, and you know, I went through the Privy Council judgment. I took the effort of doing that. And if you pick up this bill, Mr. Speaker, I said, a member said, we want to create this because we want to use it for political purpose. I, I said that this commission is replicated throughout the Caribbean because imagine we are still big. Imagine small territories like Dominica and St. Lucia who got to comply with similar agreements, similar requirements and similar recommendations. They have to implement it. You think they have the resources to create a number of supervisory authorities that we have created? No, they don't. So they also have used the commission bill. Jamaica, that's why I said to you that it is called in Jamaica the legal, the general legal council. That's what the national commission is called in Jamaica. And I am inviting you to pick up com common legislation in the region and you will see that we are not doing anything other than what the rest of the Caribbean is doing. And that is why I said to the Bar Association that the rest of the legal profession in the region has moved in this direction. And we, our government, with the greatest of respect to the profession, will not expose Guyana's financial sector once again to the perils of blacklisting and sanctions, as you did when you had a one-seat majority. We are not going to do that, not for the legal profession or for any particular segment of our population. We are driven by what is in the best interest of the public good. That is the interest that we are driven by. So Mr. Ramjatan, all this noise that you are making there, they are simply noise. And how you have a special mind, you sit down and you excite yourself. You go there very calmly, and like you get ideas as, you are, as, you, as you're talking, you get fresher ideas, and you become more energized, and you see, start to see more and more phantoms. You now see this, this commission as, as a, a, another job for the boys. Yeah, you see that. My God. Job for the boys. You see this as a political weapon? No, you don't, you don't, you haven't read the bar association. They did not consider you important to send you a copy or you're a member of the bar and a member of parliament. The truth is that these supervisory agencies, they exist already. They exist in all the sectors. Yes, yeah, so how is it that they're not coming into your house? How is it that they're being not converted into political weapons? They're in existence since 2009, but this one suddenly you see that this one will be converted into a political weapon. 
I am telling you, you are irrational and delusional. That's the point I'm making. Mr. Speaker, with those concluding remarks, I ask that the bill be read a second time. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Attorney General.